Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this video will be on Microsoft Excel themes and inserts. So um, the information should be generally similar between the different operating systems, even though this is focusing on Microsoft Windows. So we're going to work on a file that is being used for the Microsoft Excel Bootcamp book. I'm not going to do all of the same things as the textbook exercises suggest, but I'm going to do more of an overview so it will help you with going through those various steps. I'm going to clean up just a little bit here. Taste du monde is really tiny and I want to make it bigger. So I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to make it size 24. 26, I'm going to make it bold. Other than that, I'm going to leave this alone. Now, anyone who's worked with Microsoft Word knows that Word has a layout tab and a design tab. But because Microsoft Excel is primarily about calculations and data analysis, they've combined the various things that can be used in Excel into one tab menu and ribbon set here. So the page layout. The page layout covers the page setup and it covers the themes and then we'll also get into the insert tab a little bit later for inserting objects. So first off, let's actually take a look here at the layout for the page setup. Um, I will likely also touch on this in another video, but let's take care of it here. So basically the orientation means the, the, whether the paper when it's printed out is taller than it is wide, or the document is taller than it is wide. And given when you're working on a spreadsheet, you have a number of columns, you usually want to use landscape. That'll make it a little wider. Now we can't really tell until we go into page layout. So at this point, you can see that the page is now a little bit wider than it is tall. It's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper though. So we're going to go over to the page size, we'll change it to legal, which is another thing you can do. Now in this particular case, this would all probably fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but if this proved to have more columns added to it, then that's, that's why you would do this. And then the margins you could set up, the normal margins look like this, you can make them a little narrower like that, or you can come in and you can customize them by choosing custom margins and making it so maybe the left is and the right are both five and then the bottom and you know, the top can be a little bit more. So you can, you can modify things like that. I'll make this a little bit bigger and we're going to take it back to the normal page view. Also in the page layout tab are the themes. Now the themes are the color sets that you can uh, attach to a document so that whenever you add text and want to change the text color, you'll have a color palette to work from. What do I mean? So when you select on a cell like Taste Du Monde and you go into your home tab, you decide you want to change the color. This is the palette of colors you get to choose from unless you want to go into more colors and try to customize things, which can be fun. It can be useful. But a theme kind of ties together the palette of colors you could choose from for a workbook, especially if the workbook with its various sheets is part of a bigger project that's being produced in various Microsoft um, applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint. And you want them to have a cohesive look so they would all use the same theme in the same color palette. So back to page layout. The default theme is usually Office, so that's what gives us the color palette that we looked at. Um, I'm working at a school that has its own theme, and then there are a variety of other ones you can choose from. And this is one of the differences that folks on other operating systems and Windows may see. Mac users don't always see all of these. So if for some reason you plan to work with a theme with somebody else who has a Mac, you want to make sure that they have the same theme. But right now, since I don't know which ones are on any, any student or learner's um, Macs, if you have one, I'm just going to choose a theme for this exercise called Basis. Now, what that does is it simply changes color and changes fonts. If you come over, remember, if you roll over, can you see in the background there how the, the document is changing? It's adding different fonts and it's choosing a different bar color, which would be probably the dominant color in, oh, that would be awfully hard to read that one. And what is it called? Uh, main event. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and we'll choose for this one called basis. 
Now, what if you don't like the color palette? Well, let's see what the color palette is. If I go to home and I come here and this is what I've got. So they're kind of more natural earthy colors, a red, a green, a blue, a different green. There's no yellow in here. There's an orange. There's no purples or anything. Maybe you don't like this color palette, even though you may really like the fonts. And so those look good. So let's go to the page layout. You can actually come here and you could choose a different color scale or palette to use with basis. So it would keep the other things that are part of the theme. But if you wanted something that oh, was overall had more reds and oranges in it, you could choose that. You could choose something that's maybe got a slightly more techy looking colors, or you could choose grayscale if you wanted that. So right now, I think in this particular case, I'll choose red orange. Then that way, if I go to the home tab and I come here and I want to change taste du monde to something else, I could choose from a whole variety of reds and oranges. I'll just choose that one for kicks. The other thing you could do is, well, maybe you actually liked the original colors. So we're going to go back to themes and we're going to click basis again, which will redefault it back to what it was. But um, we're going to say, you know, those fonts aren't my favorite. So I could come down here and I could hover over these and I could see how different fonts look and choose one of those. So maybe I choose this one. And maybe I don't like that either. At this point, you should be able to do Control Z to undo what you did. So I'm going to stay here with the basis, with the new font palette with the reds in it, and then keep the fonts that are part of the theme. Effects is another thing you can choose. Now, these will really only show up when you bring in shapes and add borders to things, but they give slight variance to the way things look. You can have a frosted glass look. You can have riblets. You can have a reflection, very slight one. You can have a slightly glowy edge. You can have grunge. Let's do grunge and see what happens with that. Now, that's not going to show up until we actually do some inserts, which is next. Inserts would use the Insert tab, and there's all sorts of things you can insert in here. Charts will come in another chapter when we talk about charts and graphs and how to use them from basic tables of numeric data. Pivot tables, same thing. That will come in a different way. Tables will also come in a different chapter where we focus mostly on that. But you actually can insert a table anywhere you want, or you could take existing data and make it a table. But what we want to do is take a look at things like illustrations, just real simple stuff. Say you wanted to put a shape in here, and I'm going to choose a lovely sunshine because it's Seattle and it never seems to be sunny enough for my taste. If I choose that shape, right now my cursor looks a little different. It has this little tiny crosshair here, but actually, and I know from experience, my cursor is loaded with the shape. So I need to hold my left mouse button down and drag and I can kind of draw the shape and there it is. Now this is an interesting thing to learn. I've now clicked away from the shape. This is my normal menu of tabs and their ribbons. If I click the shape suddenly a new contextual menu tab and ribbon that goes with it shows up. It activates for the shape. It used to be back in the day Microsoft tried to cram everything in, and finally a decision was made, which is actually kind of clever, to make sure that certain contextual tabs with various options that you need only show up for the item that needs it. So this exists for tables, for shapes, for smart art, word art, things like that. So now in the shape, I've clicked the shape, and I have this whole tab of stuff I could do with it. I can adjust the size of it. Usually things like the shape, I want to make sure I get this right here. I'm going to make this so that it's about two inches wide. Now in this particular case with the shape, they do not link these together. It is not going to change the height at the same time as it changes the width. So in this case, you might have to go in and manually try to take a wild guess what would work and do two. Or you can drag a corner and you can move it around and do all sorts of things with it. And kind of, you know, eyeball it. And this is, of course, you know, um, for, for when you have the, the vision to be able to do it. You can also come in here and you can choose some styles to change the shape to. You can hover over them. So, for instance, it might change the quality of the fill. This is where you can start seeing some of that grunge that we chose for an effect. 
and different variations of the grunge. So say I'd like a dark red one here. So these are non-grunge and these are very grungy. Maybe I want this bright one here. So that one's kind of cool. You can also go in and simply change the fill. So maybe I just want to change it so that it's this kind of tangerine color. Is that tangerine? Or is that a little bit more of a, well, that's good. And then you can change the outline. The outline means that the outline of the shape would be a little different uh, of the pieces and parts. The problem is you can barely see it. So if you go to the shape outline and you go down to weight, you can always change the weight. See what happens? It's kind of funny looking. Then if I click away from the shape, then the shape format contextual menu item is gone. What are other things you can insert? We'll just do one more and then leave it at that. Illustrations, another fun one that people do is smart art. It's fun because it's actually an additional way of parsing your information, of organizing small amounts of information that you want to have an impact. And it can be used in Word and it can be used in PowerPoint. It can also be used here in Excel. And it's categorized by different ways that smart art can be used. But what I'm gonna do is look at all and I'm gonna just pick something that looks kind of fun here. Um, let's do this gears one. Now what this does is it shows you a preview of what this will look like, but this isn't necessarily the color you're going to get. This particular preview indicates that probably two or three colors will be used, but of course it will be dependent on the theme that you chose. And you will also be able to make modifications. So right now, okay, for instance, in this particular case, the smart art actually just came in as one color and it has what you call a little box here where you can see the hierarchy of items here so in here i could type hmm, coffee then i can copy do tea and i could do cola or i could close this and reopen it with this little arrow Close, open, close, open. And I could come back here and say, I want mocha. And I could type directly in here. Another thing is that when you click on the smart art, just like when you clicked on the shape, I now get a new contextual menu, except in this case, I get two of them. I get the smart art design and then another format tab here. Oh, actually, there's no format tab here, but in Word, it gets confusing because there's actually a format tab in Word. <laughs> But here, I can use the smart art design to change some of the styles. So I could come here and do this grungy one. I could change colors. So I could use a variation of colors and still have the grungy look, etc. I can also decide to change the layout that would be similar. Oh, this is interesting. That's a nice drink. I'm going to keep it. But you could, you could, you could change layouts. And um, you can add the text pane from up here as well as from this little arrow. And you can actually separate the text pane. It isn't actually stuck to the smart art. If you separate it, it will show up on the screen. But when you're doing your Merc, you might want to keep it kind of close. On the Format tab, this allows you to go in and change things like the text itself. So right now the text is white. I could change it to a bright yellow or something else if I wanted. So you have these things that you could play with. So anyway, I hope this gives you a bit of an overview of how you can insert things and how the inserted items have their own contextual menus that you can work with, how you can assign a theme, how you could change the colors and the fonts and the effects in the theme, and also how you can use the page layout to change the margins, the orientation, and the size. So thank you very much. I hope this was helpful to you.